Hello and welcome to the Savvy Money Show. Now, if you enjoy any of tonight's programming, please hit the like button. It helps get the video out to as many people as possible. And please, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'm grateful for everyone who subscribes and I'm grateful for you giving up your precious time to watch this video. Now, I'm going to, I know you've probably seen lots of these already, but I'm going to give up my reasons why I think it's going to be a crash. The Fed, Federal Reserves, have given over three trillion dollars in stimulus and have okayed more stimulus bills. We haven't been given the final figure of that, but so far they've borrowed their whole debt has gone to six trillion and it's rising week on week. The fact of that alone will have no option but to cause hyperinflation. Now, as well as that, we have the unemployment level. Now, the unemployment level has gone past 30 million, over 15%, and that's rising day by day. There are companies who are refusing to accept the PPP scheme just because it means you have to keep on staff for the period. And they're giving it back saying, no, we want to be able to fire staff. If you, you're going to tell us uh, the payroll protections program it means we have to keep staff on. We'd rather not have it. No. So you've got 15% of the country unemployed and rising, which is over 30 million people. That's what the highest they've had. You've got the highest debt they've ever had and rising. They the air all the Airbnb properties, people people who rent out Airbnbs, they've all put their properties up for sale because they can't afford them. That in itself would be enough to start housing crisis. But there's more. That you have these people are told they can do forbearance on their mortgages on their rent but what they're not told is you still have to pay that money you get three to six months to pay but that money is still there and it's sit, sitting there building up with the interest till it gets to a level you can't Something the UK done with a bedroom tax. Around the corner from me, there was a huge load of council properties that they wanted to renovate and sell off to landowners to do new builds, what they call unaffordable housing, under the guise of affordable housing. Now, where they double the price, call it affordable housing, and uh, give 10% uh, uh, double the price it was before, only because the rest of the development is treble or quadruple the price. Now, what they did was they brought in the bedroom tax, people weren't paying it, and they, they didn't bother chasing it. As soon as they wanted to knock down the whole block, and sell it off they've said to people you've got to pay this or you'll be evicted and no one had a leg to stand on be the same with forbearance it will get to us if you can pay for a bit your mortgage or your rent do because if you're going to forbearance it will be marked on your financial record even though they can't put it on your credit score and someone when you go looking for a loan will see you in forbearance 
refuse to give you a loan. Not only that, your rent, your mortgage and the interest is still building up. It's different if they put it at the end of your mortgage term. That's what they've done over here in the UK. You know, some of them have put it at the end of the mortgage term. Not all of them, but some of them have. Now, the thing is, I can see in about 6 to 12 months, they're going to be foreclosing on the, the, a lot of them properties. But then the banks will have control of those properties and they'll want to sell them but the, the housing market will be flooded already so the prices of them they will go down as well and cause another banking crisis not only that the help for landlord scheme help for landlord scheme in america it, the only help it gives is for a limited time, a limited amount, and it means if you want to sell your property, you have to offer it to the government first, as of what they call a minimal priced housing. I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact naming. But if you've got a beachside property, or LA beachside property, they they will be government will be pricing it up as ghetto prices, and saying, "Look, it's all here in the contract. You took the money. We paid you up front with this money, and it's a way for the government to get more housing." On their books at cheap cost so those homeless people a lot of them uh, sort of, uh, will have nowhere to go these unemployed people a lot of them won't get their jobs back there are companies who can afford to keep these people on who are using the virus as an excuse to get rid of people. It's a company in the UK who have looked to get rid of uh, Saturday working for years and it's been fought against for years and now they've used uh, because it could mean 25,000 jobs now they're using the virus as an excuse. We don't have the staff because so many people are off because of the virus. And now, nah. and they need uh, approval from a regulator and so many red tape to do it. And now they've done it without any ad discussions with the union. Now, nah. They haven't even put a clause in saying as soon as the virus is over, we will re-implement a Saturday. Because they don't want to. And it's the same in America. Plenty of companies. You look at them. Like of Apple and Google. All of these companies. Massive companies. They've, they've beaten. A lot of them have beaten their earnings. And they are still, they are still doing hiring freezes. They're stopping any hiring and at the same time they're stopping any allowances from home or at work while this is going on way for them to cut costs well they're thinking well everyone else is doing it we'll do it 
Now, Amazon, everyone's going about how Amazon are taking on more stuff. They need more stuff because they're extremely busy. And when you look at the terms and conditions those staff are on anyway, everyone's been saying for years how Amazon is sl slave labour and they're terrible conditions. It's only once you get up to a managerial or senior level that you actually get proper good conditions. So, when you take that, you only need one or two of those factors to actually cause a crash, a housing crisis or a banking crisis and a pandemic or a lockdown or, you know, or huge debt like never seen before unrealized unemployment gdp at worst level yeah and what happens next i've done a video on gilead what happens if the their drug doesn't work they haven't done controlled test that's worked at the moment they've given some vials to a hospital and it's worked you don't know if it was the drug that worked if it was the respirators Tesla respirators that worked or if it was some other drug they were giving alongside it that worked and I've done a video on that before I've also done a video on Moderna the other uh, company that's causing all the hope what, what happens if that vaccine doesn't work you know well and then we will see a downward slide like we've never seen before, even with the virus. That's why if you're investing, you could, again, you've got to invest in companies. I'm not saying don't invest. I'm just saying invest in companies that have great balance books. No to little debt or can go a long while without taking any money. I'm not talking about nine months to a year. I'm talking more like two years. I know it's very somber and a very long video, but I just felt it had to be said purely because it's, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. And the people at the top seem to be ignoring it. It's almost like thinking we put a brave face on it we make it look okay. I mean, it's. I'm worried. I'm in the UK and I'm worried because what happens in America affects us in the UK because so much of our finances are invested in America. And now it's got to a stage where America and the UK have more, more deaths than any other country. And it's still rising. In a way, it's all for me this evening. As I said, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you later.